All right, today's mentor book is called I Need My Monster. Some of you have already said that you've heard this one before. Uh, I'm going to read it. I'm going to have to read really loud so Declan can still hear me on the microphone on that. All right, so I'll be over here. Actually, you know what, Jordan, come here. You're going to be my page turner since you're my electrician. So sit here, and this will turn the baby. All right, so here it is. First page on Okay, so stay right there. All right, here we go. Tonight, when I looked under the bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Gone fishing. Back in a week. Gabe. What was I going to do? I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep if my monster was gone? Go ahead. I'm going to sit over here. I'll be able to see a bazillion times better. Can you see what was happening? Not at all. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I tried to sleep, but it wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing, his nose whistling, the scrabbling of his uncut claws. How would I ever get to sleep without Gabe's familiar scary noises and his spooky green ooze? It was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week. I just had to have a monster. The next part's hard to read because it's a very dark picture. I'll try my best. Actually, I bet if I do this. So. Oh, sorry, yeah. That does help a little bit. I climbed quietly out of bed so my parents wouldn't hear me. Grown-ups have some strange ideas about monsters under beds. I knocked on the floorboards and scrambled back under my covers, and I waited nervously. Would a new monster appear? What would he be like? Would his snorting be as cheerful as Gabe's? Okay, go ahead. When I heard some creaking under my bed, I knew that the substitute monster had arrived. Good evening, said a low, breathy voice. My name is Herbert, and I'll be your monster for the evening. Herbert? What kind of name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary at all. Have you ever scared a kid before? Well... No, but I've read all the best books on the topic. Do you have, I'm sorry, do you have long teeth and scratchy claws? I asked. No, but I have an overbite and I'm a mouth breather. Listen. <laughs> Herbert's panting was kind of scary, but it wasn't enough for me. Hey, go ahead. Listen, Herbert, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is going to work. And it's nothing personal, but I really need a monster with claws. Picky, picky, Herbert complained. As you wish, I will go. There was some more creaking. Then Herbert was gone. Okay, go ahead. Some scratching warned me that a second monster had appeared. Good evening, he said in a high, silky voice. My name is Ralph. I understand you need a monster with claws. If you would please lean over, I will hold out an arm for inspection. I crouched on the edge of the bed, hoping to see a horrible, shaggy arm with sharp, ragged nails. Instead, I was surprised to see sleekly brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, I asked, but is that nail polish on your claws? Yes, it is, Ralph replied. I believe professional monsters should always be well groomed. I could tell that this was not going to work either. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but I need a monster with scary claws, 
like geese, I thought. I heard some more oops. I heard some more scratching and I knew Ralph was gone. Okay, go ahead. A minute later, a third voice from under the bed rasped. Check out these claws, kid. I gathered my courage and peered over the edge. The claws were impressive, jagged and dark and razor sharp. So far, so good. I was a little nervous. Could you stick out your tail? I whispered. Sure. But don't get scared. Okay, go ahead. Eat through my fingers at the slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. That's when I noticed the bow. Are you a girl monster? Well, of course I am, she snapped. I'm Cynthia. Do you have a problem with that? <clears throat> um, yeah, I do, I admitted. I definitely need a boy monster. Boy monsters are for boys and girl monsters are for girls. Everybody knows that. Well, Aren't you a picky one? She sniffed, and then she was gone. But was I being too picky? No. I knew that my monster needed to be well-clawed and menacing. The whole point of having a monster, after all, was to keep me in bed, imagining all the scary stuff that could happen if I got out. Then I heard a shuffling noise and some slobbering, and a fourth monster was under my bed. Hey, my name's Mac. One look at his claws proved that Mac was a big, scruffy boy monster. Shivered, maybe this one could work out. Those are excellent claws, but do you have a long tail? I leaned over to see. No, and my tail's the thumpy, Max slurped. But I do have an unusually long tongue. Why would I be afraid of a long tongue? I asked. Oh, I don't know, he said, trying to sound terrifying. You never know when I might lick you. I fell on the bed laughing. Uh, well, if you're not even going to try to work with me, Mac whined. I held in my giggles. I really don't eat, think, I'm sorry, I really don't think you should send me away, he warned. Kids who reject five monsters in one night? Well, I did not reject five monsters tonight, I interrupted. My regular monster went fishing. Fishing, eh? Maybe he just left because he's so picky. Fine, I'm out of here. But I wouldn't expect another monster tonight if I were you. How was I ever going to get to sleep without my monster? But I was surprised to hear more creaking under the bed. Loud creaking. The scratching. I thought no more monsters were going to appear tonight, I said. Sorry, I'm late, kid. Phew, it was game. I thought I would enjoy fishing, but I didn't, he explained. Those fish scare too easy. No challenge at all. You, however, are challenging, my friend. You're almost too old to be afraid of monsters. Keep me on my toes. Ah, toes, a delicious snack. The bed quivered as Gabe's stomach rumbled with hunger. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread, soundless. I'm sorry, what does that say? Is it soundlessly? Yes, soundlessly from underneath. Okay, go ahead. 
Then the bed trembled as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. He was daring me to guess where he might pop up. I shivered. Hey, go ahead. So, you had some substitute monsters tonight, Gabe said, sharpening his claws on my bedpost. Were you scared? Then Gabe started tapping. I could tell that he wanted to know if I still needed him. No other monster can scare me like you, I giggled, diving under my covers and pulling them up tight. Through the blanket, I heard Gabe's soft, comforting snorts. Ah, I knew it. We're made for each other, he growled. He got. When my blanket started to slip off the bed, I knew Gabe was ready to eat. Now, if you would please stick out your foot, he said. I'd like to nibble your pinky. I yanked my blanket back up and scrunched my feet in so Gabe couldn't get him. No toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered, pushing a pillow off the bed. I didn't even hear it hit the floor. Okay, go ahead. Gabe was back. The ooze was perfect. Everything was back to normal. I shivered again. I'd be asleep in no time. Okay, go ahead. And I think that's the very last page. Click one more. Yeah. Yes. How does he go to bed if he's so scared? It's just it's the idea that it keeps you in bed is, I think, the idea. All right. I kind of want to make them out. Okay. Well. It just depends. The person that wrote this thought it would be interesting to have them be stuck in bed. Okay, can you actually go and turn the lights on? And then when you get back to your seat, turn off the projector. And everybody needs their uh, look. So I'm going to call your name and come and get it. So if Olivia and Jordan and Avery can get yours, and Brody can get yours, and Zoe can get yours. And I can't stop right now. But if you're seeing raise your hand, I will definitely be able to tell on you. Uh, Liam, come get yours. Courtney, come get yours. Somebody, Callie, come get yours. And Fulton, come get yours. And Campbell, come get yours. And Fletcher, come get yours. And who's left out of the Yes. Uh, actually, you can just turn it on. All right. Hang on a second. I guess it's all organized here. We make a lot of copies this morning. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, no, that's right. Somebody stole my thing. Okay, here is. Your sentence. I will put my sentence up. Go ahead and glue this in. And Declan, you actually have this sentence with all of your stuff. Go ahead and get that glued in. You'll find it's a little slip. Um, yes. I put Declan's half of the stuff by the cafeteria. Yes. We important. That's why I'm just recording it. Instead of doing it live. Okay, you should be in the midst of gluing this in. And I'm just going to write it on the board for now, because when I printed this off this morning, it must have been with another teacher today. So some teacher today is going to find a big sentence of this. Hopefully they'll get it to me. Do you mean you might say what is this for? I know. They probably picked it up accidentally with something they printed off. All right. So our sentence, why is that not very hmm. There it is. Which is not very in you guys just need to glue it. I have to write it. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody still gluing their in? All right, I get it done quickly. Should take more time to meet our right. Remember, you can do it glue, don't get it done. Question or are you just pretending? Okay, well, there's a way to do it. But I guess you're not going to ask a question. All right, is anybody still gluing in now? Still gluing in? Okay. All right, the first day is when we notice things. What do you notice about this particular sentence that we could write down on that makes this a unique sentence? Go ahead. It's a declarative sentence. It is a declarative. So write this down. Declarative. And do we know by now a declarative sentence has a period and it's a statement? Because mm -hmm. we've written that down so many times? Yes. Okay. If you're not sure, you can add period, because that's the end mark, and statement. If by this point you already know that a declarative sentence has a period and is a statement, you don't need to look at it. But if I come up to you at recess and I say, what's a declarative sentence? You better be able to tell me. It has a period and it's a statement. Otherwise, you better write it. Yes, Liam. Quotation marks around one sentence. There you go. Let's put that it has quotation marks. And then put this word. Dialogue. Quotation mark shows that someone is speaking, and that's called dialogue. Uh, yes, Brody. Um, can you just write down a declarative? Yeah, that's what I just got done talking about. Be ready at recess. Why? Because I'm going to ask you what's the clear sentence. Yeah. There you go. If you don't, I'll immediately send you in to write it down. No. Yeah. I think I should. Yeah, good. I think that would be fun. It's a little fun recess game. Called declarative sentences. Yeah. Hey, let's play the game called declarative sentences. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. Right, you've got another thing that you're noticing. Yet. What else do you notice about this sentence? Um, something that Liam said is a separate thing that I'm going to notice. Because he said there's quotation marks in the. Because he noticed two things, and he said technically kind of two things. Because he added something, the other thing he noticed. What else do we notice? Go ahead. Um, the sentence is not but in front of will and behind one, there's like quotation marks. There is quotation marks. That's the dialogue that they're saying. Okay, there's something, what, what can you tell us about this? Um, there's like these little marks between... Hang on just a second. Yes? Can you um, come to the first meeting room for your screen? Oh, yes we can. Okay, pause where we are. We need to go do a hearing and eye screening. I'm going to do that right now every couple of years. So, line up 
at the door. Declan, we'll have to see you later with this. I'll make a separate video that has the things we're noticing. Yep. <laughs>